for me, I wanted to tell the story of a tea house. Um, how tea shops started in India, came to Yangon, um, and really over the last hundred years, sort of merged into this Indian, Chinese, Burmese cultural melting pot. My name is Isabella Suetin, but a lot of my peers call me Izzy. I school here, finished high school here, and then I went to Australia for university. And um, what I finished off with, my degree is completely different to what I do now. So I double majored in medical microbiology and immunology and biochemistry from the University of New South Wales in Sydney. It was my last semester left in university, came back during a holiday, and then, of course, um, a, a, a skate bar. Escape. The skate bar was the bar to go to and you back then you could immediately pot, uh, spot a new person in town and so he was like the six foot uh, Burmese British looking guy who really stuck out like a sore thumb so I knew immediately like who is this guy I want to know him and so um, and so after a few after a few times of seeing each other, a mutual friend of ours introduced us, and then I think it was that first night we just you know sat at the bar like this, and then we spoke for three four hours straight, and then no one could like interfere, and I guess um, that's where it started. But I had one semester left of school, so I went back to university, and he followed. Um, not so much to my sister and my mom's delight. But one week after I left, he bought tickets and he moved to Sydney with me. And then it was sort of back and forth from then on. Um, and you know, he was he was sort of like a stay-at-home boyfriend because I had you know last semester finals thesis and all of that. So he would cook me lunch. I lived next to campus, so we, he would come to campus, bring me lunch, have lunch together. But it was nice because like I saw a different side to Sydney than the last three and a half years because he was always always like really into food and cooking and markets and stuff like that so when he came uh, we sort of explored other parts of Sydney that I didn't see and that's when we started talking back and forth and this idea of starting up our own little uh, back then it was gelato right we wanted to do an ice creamery yeah. Uh, but then I guess, you know, bottom line, we shared our own uh, same interest with food. <laughs> now that Izzy's given us a full rundown of our relationship history, which I don't need to get into. Um, I was I was born here, um, but I left when I was four with my family. So my family migrated to the UK. Um, I grew up in the UK up until I was 22. Uh, so I came back to Myanmar straight after university um, in 2012. Um, worked at the Heritage Trust, which was um, my first ever job. So Thant was very kind enough to get me a job back then. And then, um, yeah, I met Izzy and we came back, I think, the end of 2013 from Australia together. And I opened Rangoon Tea House in 2014, um, which, was, which was back then, I think, um, a lot easier than what I perceive it's like now to open a restaurant. I think when you don't know anything, then everything is a lot easier. You know, I think like, I just wanna, I, I've just always been fixated with the idea of being able to express yourself through different means. Um, you have, artists can come in many different forms, right? Um, the same way doctors can come in many different forms. And I think the way I kind of look at myself is, even though my, I grew up, my parents were doctors and I studied economics at school, I'm much more, um, I'm a terrible student. You know, I've, I failed my A-levels, I almost failed every year at university, but it's just something that I'm not into. I'm just more, I was more interested in this idea that we could not promote Myanmar in a cliche sort of way, but I was really interested in people's perceptions of, you know, our country through our food and how we could elevate, you know, not elevate the food, but elevate the perception of the food and therefore have a secondary effect on how people see our country and more interesting than that, how sort of people see themselves, right? Because, you know, people talk a lot about this sort of Burmese pride thing. And I think, you know, food is such a, has such a close relationship with all Burmese people. And um, 
To be honest, I thought opening a restaurant would be easy. So it was easier than you know doing anything else at the time. And I thought I grew up in a house full of food lovers, and my mom was a really good cook. And and when I thought about different things to do, you know, money was never never really interested in money. Um, it was just something that I thought would be fun and cool. And you know, six years later, we're still here. And what inspired me to get into this? I guess, you know, most people grew up wanting to be something, right? So my brother wanted to be a doctor. A lot of my friends wanted to be footballers or, you know, some people wanted to be, you know, vets and dentists and whatever. And I was always obsessed with, with where I wanted to be. And this was the only place I ever wanted to be. And it sounds kind of corny and, and whatnot, but it's kind of true. You know, if you, if you ask my parents what did Tet want to be when he was a kid, they'll just tell you, oh, he never said any of that. He just said, oh, I'm going to move back to Myanmar as soon as you know, school finishes. And I think in that sort of way, because I got to achieve what I wanted to all my life when I was 22, I was kind of, you know, there's not this burden on my shoulders, you know, like I have to apply for a job and I must do this and career progression and all that, you know, in my eyes back then, like rubbish. It was more, okay, how do I express myself? And, and I'm, I was really lucky to grow up in a family where my dad's so patriotic and my mom is so into Burmese food. And they, I guess, were the key inspirations in my life getting into the restaurant business. And, and you know, for me, it wasn't about how many customers come through your door. It's really about, you know, how, how you want to take the food that is in front of you and use that to convey a message to other people. And for me, I wanted to tell the story of a tea house. Um, how tea shop started in India, came to Yangon, um, and really over the last hundred years, sort of merged into this Indian, Chinese, Burmese cultural melting pot um, of cuisines and religions and ethnicities and languages. And for me, that's the story of Myanmar that I wanted to tell. I initially started Rangoon Tea House with um, three friends. And so Izzy wasn't officially involved at the beginning, like officially, but I think, um, you know, because we're always together anyway. So back then, it was more, as soon as the restaurant opened, the only real person that is there every single day um, was Izzy. And then, you know, about six months later, we all thought it was a great idea um, that Izzy comes on board sort of full time. But um, realistically, yeah, we've been involved like pretty much since the, I think, the conception of Rangan Tiaz, which was, I think, was at another bar, maybe 19th Street because we were with one of our friends and we got a little drunk and I said, this is what I want to do. And, and our friend Jen back then, she happened to be a consultant for Bain and she was in Myanmar working for Urdu on a contract. And she's like the super whiz on, X, on Excel. And I, I pitched this idea when I was drunk and the next morning she'd already created the whole um, business plan on Excel and she shot it over. And that was pretty much, um, yeah, the conception of it. And um, I have a very uh, um, traditional mom um, in her mindset saying that, you know, um, can't work with your boyfriend or back then it's just like, okay, you want to start a restaurant? Wait, let's wait and see. And so it was, I think, a few months after Rangoon Tea House opened and then she sort of saw the potential and she's like, okay, you can work with your boyfriend now. But even when we first started, it was, um, it was, it was the first thing that we both did all for ourselves and on our own and so we don't come from a corporate background and so a lot of the things that we did was trial and error and so um, just slowly we learned our own skill set and what we contribute to the company or the business and so we realized um, through after a lot of fights and arguments that okay we we clearly bring different things to the table and let's separate our roles. And from then on, our relationship and our work relationship improved a lot. And so I am involved in the finance and the administrative side of the, of the business. Um, so I come up with budgets for a lot of the um, a lot of the departments. And if Ted has an idea, he will come to me and then I sort of give him a budget that he can work around with. Beg for a budget. And so, um, and uh, we, so he does a lot of the concepts and the um, the planning side, and so I'll follow up with the um, the finance side and also the administrative side. So um, a lot of a lot of looking backwards, I guess, because I have to deal with a lot of auditors, and then he sort of looks forward to the business. 
Yeah. So yeah, that's how we've sort of separated. And then it's also, it's, I think one of the biggest things that I was very wary of early on is that you should not, I've always been a believer that people should do what they're strong at. There's many different theories about this. Some people are super interested in being great at things that they're not, right? So, but for me, I feel like, you know, especially when it's to do with pursuing um, your goals or, you know, trying to figure out what you want to devote most of your time doing. I really think that I want, I personally, plus everyone who works for us and is affiliated with us, I think everyone should pursue things that they're not only passionate about, that, but things that they can really excel in. And so for me, I'm a, I'm a disorganized, I'm a not very budget conscious person. I just want to do what I want and I don't really care if people like it or not, right? That, that, that's, that's on the surface. But deep down inside, I, I'm just, I, th I guess, always sort of pining for, to express myself in different ways. And that's why we have so many different types of restaurants. Because I think, you know, you should never limit yourself. Whereas with Izzy, I think Izzy is more, much more creative in a different way in being structured and, and managing money. And people think that that's not necessarily creative, but you really have to get creative, right? So, you know, during COVID, you know, you have to get creative with your cash flow and all that. And I think we've really been able to um, figure out our, both our weaknesses and there's things that we both don't enjoy doing either. And so for that, you really, you know, invest your time into growing a great team and a big family and making sure that you have each other's back more than anything. When when WHO announced it as a pandemic, um, you know, everyone was sort of panicking and Myanmar was one of the last countries to have a positive case, right? And so we were listening and keeping our ears out for what to do. And we always look to our neighbors, Bangkok, Singapore, what, the, what restaurants are doing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, on my side of the business, I was writing uh, I was writing, creating new business plans. I have a name for every single time I create a business plan. It went from bad to bad one, bad two, crisis, and now we're in an Armageddon scenario. And so there was a point where I was creating cash flows and uh, PLs, updating them twice, twice a, twice a week, because depending on the new regulations and the new laws. In many ways, we're dreading it, but in many ways, we're looking forward to, um, you know getting into the next phase of what's new. If you look at Rangoon Tea House when it first started five years ago, on Pansodan, no other restaurants, 60 customers on the first day, compared to let's say January when you're doing a thousand customers in a day and restaurants all over Pansodan, that change is bigger than the change we have now. In my opinion, there's no there's no switch. It's not an on and off button, especially if like you, you've sort of devoted, you've jumped into this, everything you have is in this. And so um, for us, it's, it's hard to have that on off switch. Yeah. yeah, which is why we have dogs. Just if I had to put it in one sentence, I would say you can Google how to write a business plan, but you can't Google what should be in it. And you know, like you have to really be able to apply the skills that you that are widely available. But at the end of the day, it's down to you. There's no free passes in any business that you do.